All right, today's uh, lesson is on Unit 3.2. Uh, this has got to do with projectiles. This is often called the range equation. Uh, the range equation can come in useful, but students get carried away using it. And the reason why they get carried away using it is it can only be used for one type of problem. The range equation is only used when you have a problem that looks like this. A problem that makes a perfect parabola, just like this one is. This is the only example of when we can use the range equation. So we've got that nice, perfect, well, near perfect parabolic shape. And I'll explain why the range equation only works. It's because of how it's derived. You see, when we go to work a problem, the first thing we'd probably do is try and find our VOX. And VOX is equal to VO cos and theta. Uh, we would then, secondly, as you've heard me on other videos say, we seek to find VOY. VOY is equal to VO sine theta. Now, once again, the only equation by range, what we're looking for is X. The only equation that applies to anything in the X direction for a projectile is x is equal to v o x t. Now, the trick for making this problem work is this. What is your value for y in this problem? It starts here, goes up and back down to the exact same point. That means your y value in this problem is zero, and that's actually what's so important in working this problem is knowing that your displacement in the y direction is zero. Uh, in other earlier videos, you heard me say, if you're looking for time, the best equation you usually use is your second equation. So let's just go for that. y equals VOYT plus one-half AT squared. Now, here's the thing. We have a y value of zero. What that does is that cancels this T and that square. So now we've just got VOY plus one-half AT. This is why the range equation only works for this problem, because we derive the range equation from looking at a zero value for your Y displacement. This problem, the physics is over. It's just algebra now plug all these equations in together. X would be equal to, instead of VOX, we'll plug in VO cos and theta. So VO cos and theta T. Over here in the other equation, instead of VOY, we'll write VO sine theta plus one half AT. Uh, now to combine these two equations, uh, this is the simpler of the two equations, so let's solve it for time and substitute it in here. So x over VO cosine theta would be equal to time. And now we plug that in. I'm going to go to the center of the paper. 0 equals VO sine theta plus 1 half of A times x over VO cos and theta, which now let's, we're going to try and solve for x because that is the range equation, so we're looking for x. This would be negative VO sine theta equals, so we bring the VO sine theta over to the left side, so subtract it, and we end up with AX over 2 VO cos and theta here. Well, now let's do more algebra. Let's multiply the other side. Multiply the other side by 2 VO cosine theta. And when we multiply the other side by 2 VO cos and theta, we get negative. We get negative VO square 2 sine theta cosine theta equals AX. Now, the problem most people have is a lot of times these problems won't give you theta. You've got to recognize 
two sine theta, cosine theta. Now go back to that trig class that you thought I'd, you never use and know that two sine theta, cosine theta is a trig identity. This is equal to sine of two theta. So negative VO squared sine two theta equals AX. If you're looking for X, divide by A. And you have negative VO squared sine two theta over A equals X. Now this doesn't look as the exact same range equation as some other books use. And that's because the way I teach physics, we just keep A at a negative 9.8 value, which then cancels the negative out, so that works great in the problems. Uh, most textbooks would give this equation, though, as just VO squared sine 2 theta over G equals X. And now you've already canceled the negatives out if you want to remember the equation this way. Um, one of the neat things y'all usually do, students do to mess this up, is they get confused about what to do with this sine of 2 theta. Uh, when you're working out a problem for this sine 2 theta, what you're going to do order of operation wise is when you get ready to do the problem, you're going to actually take the sine of 2 theta. So say, for example, if theta was 30 degrees, you would actually take the sine of 60, which is 0.866. So that's how you'd actually do the math on that. And vice versa, if you were, say that you were trying to solve it, sine 2 theta over G equals X, solve the equation for theta. That would be... See, sine 2 theta equals xg over vo squared. So then this becomes 2 theta equals sine negative 1 xg over vo squared. So let's say you work a problem out and you get that you get 2 theta, let's say, is equal to 60. That just means that theta is then equal to 30 degrees. By the way, you also need to remember something. There's always two angles in a projectile that will result in the same distance. So in other words, if here's your projectile and something is launched, if you start increasing the angle, you'll start noticing something. The angles start doubling back on themselves. For every distance, there is two angles that will result in the exact same X displacement. And it's pretty easy to get. The two angles are theta and 90 minus theta. So if you found that the first angle in a projectile to shoot a certain distance was 30 degrees, then the second angle would be 60 degrees in that problem. Now I don't know if you can guess it, but what angle do you think gives you your maximum range? Well that maximum range would be from a 45 degree launch angle for maximum range. Anyway, that is the range equation and how that equation is derived. And hopefully you'll be able to do the math in using that range equation. Oh, well, until next time, have fun, be safe, and uh, yeah, anyway, I'm good. See you all.